overflows centering the basic need of love love is the realization of oneness between two alpha and omega sun and moon energies love bridges life and light the beginning and the end love is an expression of energy that flows between seed and the flower between two shores lover and beloved between sun energy and moon energy one energy alone is capable to activate love love will remain incomplete until both sun and moon energies nourish and nurture it love is unseen but realized truth when it happens between whole and the part between god and the devotee love between god and seeker assumes different forms as lover and beloved as devotee or in many other different forms for this self actualization our centering is the basic need of human existence and when i say basic i mean that if all your needs are fulfilled all except self realization self actualization you will feel unfulfilled in fact if self actualization happens and nothing else is fulfilled still you will feel a deep total fulfillment that is why buddha was a beggar but yet an emperor buddha came to kashi the city of kashi after he became enlightened the king of kashi came to see him and asked i do not see what you have you are just a beggar yet i feel myself a beggar in comparison to you you do not have anything but the way you walk the way you look the way you laugh makes it seem as if the whole world is your kingdom and you have nothing visible nothing whatsoever so what is the secret of your power you look like an emperor really no emperor has ever looked like that as if the whole world belongs to him you are the king but where is your power the source the kingdom so buddha responded it is in me my power my source of power whatsoever you feel around me is really within me and what you see is the manifestation of what i am within i do not have anything except myself but it is enough i am fulfilled now i do not desire anything i have become desireless really a self actualized person will become desireless remember this ordinarily we say that if you become desireless you will know yourself the contrary is more true if you know yourself you will become desireless and the emphasis of tantra is not on being desireless but on being attaining to self actualization then desirelessness follows as the flowering of self actualization desire means you are not fulfilled within you are missing something so you hanker after it you go on from one desire to another in search of fulfillment that search never ends because one desire creates another desire really one desire creates 10 more new desires 
if you go in search of a desireless state of bliss through desires you will never reach but if you try something else method of self actualization method of realizing your inner potentiality of making them actual then the more you become actual the less and less desires will be felt within because really they are felt because you are empty inside when you are not empty within desire ceases what to do about self actualizations two things have to be understood one self actualization does not mean that you become a great painter or a great musician or a great poet you will be self actualized of course a part of you will be actualized and even that gives much contentment if you have a potentiality of being a good musician and if you fulfill it you become a musician a part of you will be fulfilled but not the total the remaining humanity within you will remain unfulfilled you will be one sided one part will be grown and the other will remain just like a stone hankering around your neck look at a poet when he is in his poetic mood he looks like a buddha he forgets himself completely the ordinary man in poetic mood is as if he is no more there and so when a poet in his mood he has a peak a partial peak and sometimes poets have the glimpses which are only possible with enlightened buddha like minds such is the case with musicians as well a poet can speak like buddha for example khalil gibran speaks like a buddha but he is not a buddha the statements the that he has in his classic the prophet are captured in the moments when he was at the peak he is a poet a great poet if you see khalil gibran through his poetry he looks like buddha christ or krishna so is the case with mirza ghalib but if you go and meet the man khalil gibran himself he is just ordinary he talks about love so beautifully even a buddha may not talk so beautifully but a buddha knows love with his total being khalil gibran knows love only is in his poetic flights do you want to speak beautifully of love like khalil gibran or be one like a buddha who has realized love whose every breath is overflowing love when he is on his poetic flight he has glimpses of love beautiful glimpses he expresses them he expresses them with rare insight but if you go and see the real khalil the man you will feel a disparity the poet and the man are far apart the poet seems to be something which happens to this man sometimes but the man is not the poet that is why poets feel that when they are creating poetry someone else is creating or flowing through them 
they are not creating they feel as if they have become instrument of some other energy some other force they are no more consciously they cannot create such moment this feeling comes because really their totality is not actualized only a part of it a fragment if you have not touched the sky only one of your finger has touched the sky and you remain rooted on the earth sometimes you jump and for a moment you are not on the earth you have deceived gravity gravity but next moment you are flat on the earth again when a poet is feeling fulfilled he will have glimpses partial glimpses when a musician is feeling fulfilled he will have partial glimpses it is said of beethoven that when he was on the stage he was a different man altogether different goethe has said that when beethoven was on his stage directing his group his orchestra he looked like a god an angel it could not be said that he was an ordinary man he was not a man at all instead he was super human the way he looked the way he raised his hands was all super human but when he comes back from the stage he was just an ordinary man the man on the stage seems to be possessed by something else as if beethoven was no more and some other force has entered into him back down from the stage he was again beethoven the man because of this poets musicians great artists creative people are more tense because they have two types of being ordinary man is not tense because he always lives in one as one he lives on earth but poet musicians great artists jump they go beyond gravity in certain moments they are not of this earth they are not part of humanity they become part of the buddha world the land of buddhas and then again they are back here they have two points of existence their personalities are split so every creative artist every great artist is in a certain way insane the tension is so much the rift the gap between these two types of existence is so great unbridgeably great sometimes he is just an ordinary man while other times he becomes buddha like between these two points he is divided but he has the glimpses i want you to be your existence your love to be buddha like not that of or your music that flows out of you love is the music that flows out of you it has to be a fragrance of awakening within or self actualization within enough for now